podcast live and direct here from Red Rocks in Golden, Colorado, the greatest music venue in the entire world. And we have one of the greatest performers in the entire world who is playing with us here today. <laughs> you. That's you. This is the mighty Hyrie. How are you doing, Hyrie? I'm Harry? doing good. Thank you for having me. Wow, it's awesome that you're here. Have you played Red Rocks before? I have not. It's my first time. Wow, well, what do you think so far? Have you been out? Today? Yeah, yeah, I went out there. I ran up the stairs. It's, it's beautiful. Nice. It's everything that, you know, it's more than the pictures. Uh, can... What did it feel like when you just first walked out onto the stage and looked up there? Very humbling. I mean, we're so small compared to this this vast, okay. you know, and and not just being you know a music venue, but just having it be nature, like mm-hmm. having it be provided by nature, and seeing you know was it Shiprock and then Creation on the other yeah. side, the two big rocks. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, you know? you know, every time I'm here, I think this is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Why the hell do they music build a music venue here? <laughs> and then I quickly think this is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Thank God they built a music yeah. venue here. <laughs> and I'm just blown away. Like every time I come in here, it's like, you know, have you ever been to a professional baseball game mm-hmm. and you walk out and you see the field and it is so green and it's just like this huge stadium. And uh, I get that feeling times like a thousand when I come here. Just for what you said, it's like it's natural beauty. You Absolutely. Know? It's like a holy place. It's like yeah. a shrine here. So... People here, and some people might know who you are who are listening. Others might not. So tell us where you're from or where do you live now, I should say. Yeah, I'm uh, based in San Diego with my band, and I'm originally from Hawaii, Oahu. Mm -hmm. Were Uh, you born there? No, I was born in the Philippines, and then I was raised in Italy for the first um, nine years of my life. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Hawaii when I was in third grade until I graduated. Nice. Well, so let's talk about that. Italy. What do you remember from Italy? Like, Tell me your first memory in your life. Like, what's the first memory? Probably being surrounded by so many people. Mm -hmm. I just always remember, you know, every dinner and every every festivity was just, there was always a lot of people. There's always a lot of laughter. Dinners Mm -hmm. were not quiet. You Mm -hmm. know, they were just loud. And so I grew up with like a very loud environment. And uh, that's, to me, something that I hold dear. And I I still try and I try and always have a lot of people around and, and try and, vibe off of that nice. you know was that and your, the food obviously your, oh of course yeah. <laughs> was that your immediate family that was big and loud or, or how many people are in your immediate family in my immediate it's three three, three? of us Mom, but there was just always sister. they always had posse all yeah extended exactly family we we lived with um uh, we lived uh, above, um, like a you know, a home, and uh, we had yeah. uh, Italian neighbors. So I grew up speaking Italian and English at the same time. And even though I lost the Italian, unfortunately, <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So and we always had a lot of Italians around us, and you know, Italians are just known to be loud and expressive, and wine and food and just happiness. Nice. And so that's something that I and live by. And how did by. your parents end up there? Or where are they from? Right My now? dad, um, well, he's from England. My mm-hmm. mom's from the Philippines. Mm-hmm. But um, they met and moved to Italy, and he worked for the UN. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so did you bounce around a lot after Italy, or did you just move straight to Hawaii from there? We, we moved straight uh, straight to Hawaii from mm-hmm. there, and I stayed out there. From, from nine years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in your house, you said there was a lot of, like, just loud energy people you know food drink happening all the time was there also music in your house yes lots of music in wow. fact i passed a when a poster that you know said that the gypsy kings played here and gypsy kings are one of my yeah. favorite oh, my, nice. my dad always played the gypsy kings and um lots of music and being that he worked for the un we always had really different people come over different colors ethnicities languages lots of language barriers but food wine music was always yeah. just and, the language of my and was family. it just on the stereo or did your family play instruments and sing or my dad um he's self-taught plays guitar and my mom plays a bit and she did a lot of singing too wow, so. nice so did they sing all the time and how was it just like we're cooking we're singing yeah, we're playing definitely did a lot yeah. of you know post post dinner shows at the house and at what point did you get into music from when i was very little like yeah, how old maybe like three or four I was, oh you know when did you write your first song oh or did um, you write songs when you were young? uh yeah but maybe when i was um what would you say, like seventh grade? Seventh so. grade. And what was it? What was it about? Oh, you know, typical seventh grade heartbreaks. Okay. <laughs> do you remember it? I do remember it, yeah. Can you sing a little for us? All right, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
He tells me that he'll make me smile twice more. You made me cry. And he tells me that he'll grow a rose three times. You made them die. But every time I close my eyes, I see you And we are still together I know in time I'll let you go But the pain I think will never But I'll keep a place for you in my heart and in my head, I oh, will never, ever part, ever part. So don't you forget about the love, the love. It's not every day we get things from above, above. <laughs> 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 you know, it's funny. You said it was just like, oh, a simple seventh grade. You know, I know, love song. I know. But it's a lot deeper than it's my... It's deeper than that. <laughs> yeah. There's some deep lyrics in there. Yeah. Like, I'll grow a rose for you three times. I mean, seventh graders don't write that. That's deep. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I still have the lyrics. I still have the, the handwriting, and I wrote the yeah. dates. I always wrote the dates on everything. What kind of, great. Yeah. What kind of music were you listening to at that time in your life? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, so in Hawaii, I mean, it was mostly whatever was on the radio. Mm -hmm. I just, I did a lot of... What did you gravitate to? Like well, Hawaiian Well, in music, Hawaii, or? I mean, we just have a lot of reggae on the stations. Mm -hmm. But at home, I mean, my dad would listen to a lot of Enya, Nora Jones, mm -hmm. um, Gypsy King, mm -hmm. Kenny G. I'm trying yeah. to think of... He was so random. It was, and who you was know. your favorite? What was your... Did you have like a favorite record, favorite artist when you were that age? Oh... You know what? I really like Jack Johnson. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I want to say he was the first uh, first album I bought. Wow. Mm. That's yeah. cool. Jack's a great artist and, and a great storyteller. That's Absolutely. what I love about Jack is that his songs are like... You can close your eyes you and they just paint a picture paint for, a picture for you. For, yeah. Exactly. You know, and that song that you just sang, it did that for me. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll tell Jack you were listening. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to open up the audience. Anybody here have any questions for Harry? Just blurt them out. Raise your hand. And... Your favorite current artist. Favorite current artist. So there's this uh, woman named Sabrina Claudio, and I've been really getting into her music, and she's the same way. She's very, uh, you know, she paints you a picture, and I love I love female singers. So when there's a, a new girl on the scene, I'm, I'm always, you know, really eager to pick it up and... You know. Let's talk about that for a second. What's it like to be a woman in music today? I mean, it's challenging, I, I think, for women to break into music who are doing something unique you know and most mm -hmm. of the times we're seeing you know like uh voice contestants or you know just you know really produced pop music but you you you're doing it like from the roots up mm -hmm. you know and so what's that like for you to be in that space you know i feel like reggae is such a an, a welcoming genre so mm -hmm. i haven't had you know too much difficulty as far as just being out there you know a lot of these festivals are going oh woman yes let's switch up this yeah. you know the the typical you know a b a b and let's throw a c in there let's throw a woman in there and so and, and you know they give you a shot and then it's up to me to and the band to to really show what we have and why we you know are a step up or you know this and that and and try and really uh shine, try and place, shine yeah. and you know so on one side, I don't think it's so difficult because I stand out, because I'm a female. And so people are automatically intrigued and they're willing to at least listen. Mm -hmm. But then there's always another stigma. Oh, how did she get there? How did mm -hmm. you do this? How do you do that? Oh, it's, you know. And so you have to constantly be breaking these molds down and, and try and be, you know, a leader, you know, and be on the forefront of, you know, women breaking into the scene because it's still, you know, mm -hmm. we're all still fighting for, for a place. Yeah. What was your greatest challenge as a teenager? Um, probably a lot of bullying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just my, my culture. I mean, when I grew up in Italy, I went to a British school and I, I had a British accent when I moved mm -hmm. to Hawaii and I, I had a lot of bullying and I had to shake that off as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And then how did you, you deal with it? Um, gosh, I just creative mm -hmm. got, got, got into writing, got into books, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, music mm -hmm. for sure. I would hide, you know, when, when I was worried about, you know, 
somebody wanting to fight me, which which happened often for me. <laughs> uh, I would I would run into the Polynesian culture room, and it was a music room, mm -hmm. and I never took a music class. I, I never like signed up in time. Did you get in there and like pick up commodity. a trombone and go, "Come on, right? let's go"? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Pick up some poi and be like, oh, oh, I got you. Come yeah. on, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, but I would escape. I would go into the little sound booth and I, yeah. I would teach myself. And some how did piano that affect you, like uh, inside? I mean, apart from running, definitely you know. affected me. I definitely mm -hmm. still care a lot about what people think and mm -hmm. constantly trying to be a version of what I think somebody wants. And mm -hmm. so I'm always reminding myself that being me is enough, and mm -hmm. and and that is in itself is admirable. You know. What advice do you have for teens today who are going through bullying? I mean, bullying's to a whole new level. You can't just hide. You pick up your phone and you're texting your mom and then some crazy thing comes, mm -hmm. you know, over over Twitter or something. I think most importantly is is not to lose faith and to know that it's just a stage. Being a teenager is just a stage and mm -hmm. you just need to make it out alive, mm -hmm. you know. And so reminding yourself to, to have the right friends, I think, you know, that's kind of cliche. But mm -hmm. being around people who make you feel like you is, mm -hmm. is something that you can't, you know, you can't pay for that. You can't pay for good friends. And yeah. so always invest in, in that. Right on. That's great advice. All right. Well, uh, I'd love to hear a song. Okay, cool. You got, you got, you got <laughs> yeah. some of your band here. I'm going to let you pop in here so we yeah. get a little bit of sound on this mic right here. Let's have my guitarist, Blaine Dillinger. And, uh, yeah. 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 and what's your name, bro? Chris. Chris, right Sax on. Sax <laughs> So this song here is off of our newest album. It's called, uh, it's called Queen. down for me you could tell me what's wrong what's right when every single night i'm left hanging inside we could do it one time in the night rhyme feeding on the moonlight moonshine sipping trying to get our head right one time two times if you're feeling all right why you heat it till this sparks fly when everything could be all right and if you're feeling so high, why you pacing till the sunrise? Who will be sinking in? It's all right, all right, all right. I wanna let you inside, wanna tell you I'll fight for you. I've been giving my all, but I only get half of you. Now let me get it all out, cause I'm tired of feeling blue. I wish you were in goodbye. You'll be coming home to an empty bed A king on a lonely throne And I'll be moving on, yes I will love again The kind of love we could never know Now is it safe to say I was your only friend? Cause that only goes to show while I'm moving on, while I love again, what else will you know? I wanna let you inside, wanna tell you I fight for you. I've been giving my all, but I only get half of you. Now let me get it all out, cause I'm tired of feeling blue. I wish you were letting goodbye. Yes, I never know, no, no. Do 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 do. Wanna let you inside? Wanna tell you I fight for you? Cause I've been giving my all, but I only get half of you. Now let me get it all out, cause I'm tired of feeling blue. I wish you all in good.
beautiful song. We got Hyrie here on Stay Human Podcast. And when did you write that? Ooh, um, about, about a year ago. Nice. Is it on a record that people can get right Wandering now? Wandering Soul. The album right. is called Wandering Make Soul. Make sure we pick it up, everybody. And I'm going to turn it over to the audience again. Anybody else have another question? seems to have like a definition that makes you a success and like all industries seem to have that kind of definition and when what you were talking about earlier about how you have to kind of do what's right for you and not paying attention to everybody else when did you realize that you were successful in the industry that you loved oh i mean i don't think i'll ever feel like i'm i'm there you know but when people like your music and you see the same faces in the crowd and then the crowds are gradually getting bigger, I mean, that is success. That's that's like, wow, thank you, you know? And, and it's built off the hands of everybody that hits play or comes to the show, buys a ticket to see you at Red Rocks for the first time. I have some fans that are flying in. I mean, and it's to me, I'm like, God, you know, I could have never paid this much for a show. I could have never bought a plane ticket and I'm allowing my yeah. dreams to take me where I need to go because there's absolutely no other way I, I could I could do that, you know? You can see the passion in your music. Just yeah. 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 What, what is your um, musical mission? Like, do you have some purpose that you, what do you want to achieve when, when people hear your music or at the end of your career, what do you want to people have said about you? I just want, I just want to affect people and it be in a good way and, and to help them out of something. I know that music helped me out of a lot mm -hmm. of things and I, you know, I'm still struggling every day, you know, recently learned about being an empath and what mm -hmm. that is to be an empath and how to, how to feel so much and sometimes be, you know, kind of sucked out of your own energy, you know, because you care so much about everything else mm -hmm. more than yourself so for me music is just something that flows through me and I'm just a vessel and my whole purpose is is just to serve and mm -hmm. I think that you know having this gift and having such an awesome band and having places like this to play all of that serves into the purpose of just music is medicine and, mm -hmm. and anybody who who needs it will, will hopefully find their way and so you know you have to keep exposing yourself you have to be on the road doing tours and yeah. You know that my whole purpose, I think, is just to help people. And yeah. And what's something? What's some point in your life when music helped you get through it? What was? Can you do you remember a time when something was happening and music pulled you through? Yeah. I mean, gosh. You know, I I was there when you know. I think when trance and house was just starting to mm -hmm. break the surface. Yeah, yeah. But I really, I really liked it. I, f I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, like trance lifted me, you know, mm -hmm. and at the time I was, I was addicted to, you know, drugs and a lot of things. And I was, mm -hmm. I was dating the wrong people. And I remember, you know, trying to commit suicide. I remember being, you know, in a, in a psych unit mm -hmm. because I'd, I'd tried to overdose. And mm -hmm. I remember that music, even though it was part of my problem, mm -hmm. would always lift me back up and make me realize, you know, if I was listening to like Slipknot or Seven mm -hmm. Dust, I mean, I don't know where I would be, <laughs> you know? Um, but, but that music saved me in a sense from, you know, I would listen to it when I would drive to school and every day I would hold the wheel and I, I would always think about, you know, making that turn off, you know, and mm -hmm. that music would just, I would allow myself to escape. Mm -hmm. into it and and reggae in the same in the same light mm -hmm. i mean yeah yeah M music is there for me when when it's hard to communicate with with human beings <laughs> right, on. right on thanks for sharing that by yeah. the way you had a question there yeah so you're always having so much fun on stage i just want to know what's your favorite song Ooh. Well, uh, she, uh, right? I'm just going to repeat it so they can hear yeah uh, he said you're always having so much fun on stage what's your favorite song to perform as of right now, Boom Fire, which is one of our songs, and I, it's really high impact, high energy, and um, I get to twirl on stage, like back and forth <laughs> a lot in my heels. So uh, nice. I really, I enjoy the power of that, like being able to just, ah, uh, I just, they, they make room for me and I just go ham. And That you know, sounds super fun. Yeah. I, got, I got to get some heels yeah. so I can... Uh, do that twirling about. You know yeah. you can twirl on any song you feel. It's your yeah, stage. Yeah, I know, there. I know, but right. <laughs> this one, this one's special. Nice, yeah. it inspires you. All right, any other questions? I don't have a question, but I want to say yeah. something. You are very inspiring. You're young. You have a lot of energy. You're right on with everything you're saying, Mike Michael. Stay human. You've got it, and you're very real. And I think thank you. And we need more of that. Thank you. Awesome. That. That brings me to kind of our last question here. This, this is the Stay Human podcast. And what is it that you do in this world that is constantly judging us by our number? You know, there's a number next to our bank account. Or there's a number on Facebook, how many 
friends we have. Or there's a, you know, there's all these things that dehumanize us all the mm -hmm. time and politics and there's so many things out there that divide us. And what do you personally do to stay human, to hold on to your humanity? help people <laughs> mm, yeah, i'm yeah. so cliche i'm like miss america that's I'm not sorry. cliche at all no I, no I i i think i think getting down rolling your sleeves up you know i'm, I'm mm -hmm. always i have my daughter with me i always you know if we have leftovers we go and we look for people to give our food to or um being in nature i mean sometimes mm -hmm. we forget because we're so caught up in living in a in a tiny little 500 square foot apartment or or a house sometimes that you never leave, that you forget that being human is being outside barefoot, like mm -hmm. in the water. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the kind of person where if I don't get my vitamin D, I'm depressed. <laughs> like, so I, I need the sun, I need the salt, I need the, the sand in my hair. Like yeah. that's, that's me. Yeah. So being outdoors and, and then also for me, helping other humans through, through life. I mean, none of us have it easy and the people who, who, you know, you think sometimes are the happiest people are, are not. And so you have to constantly be smiling and putting that outward, you know, expression in yeah. the song that I have with Trevor Hall that he said he's going to do with me. So I'm so excited. Yeah. It'll be our first time. It's called Good Vibration and it's, um, you know, speak it to the earth, put it in rotation, be the vibe you seek, the good vibration. And constantly I remind myself that you have to be what you want, you know, what, what you want to see in somebody else. You have to be, reflect, you know. So. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. I feel like I, I, I got to know you a lot more just from this. I'm sure everybody here agrees. And, Thank you. Um, we're all excited to see you perform today, and we're all excited to hear more Hyrie music in the future. And so go out and pick it up. How can folks find you on social media? Um, so I run on my social media platforms. I'm most active on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, Hyrie Music, H I R I E Music. I follow you too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, can, you can DM me on there. I'm, I'm always conversing with people on Facebook, email. You know, you can come to a show. At the end of my set, I'm always at my merch booth, and I'll be there for, you know, an hour or two. Nice, nice. Thank you, Hyrie, for being here. That's it for this edition of the Stay Human podcast from Red Rocks with Hyrie, Trevor Hall, Michael Front, and Spearhead on the Love Out Loud tour. Have an outstanding day and remember whatever you do to stay human, y'all.